Chapter 6, verses 1 to 17. Now I saw when the Lamb opened up, opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat in it to take peace from the earth, so that the people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked and saw, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair, a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for Daenerys, and three quarts of barley for Daenerys, and do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, for the name of him who sat in it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, O holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. And the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and an island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountain and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Amen. Amen. So, what have we just read? So, uh, we hear from God's word that when the seal, verse 1, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and that sat, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was uh, given unto him, and he went out, he went forth, conquering and to conquer. So the theme from here is that what will be happening will be something that will cause it's about death about killings about uh, destruction but it is not again about the beast it's keen it's about people about uh what will be happen the the, uh, the angel open the seal all right but then what will happen will cause so many uh destructions and that is what uh we need to be aware of we need to be ready we need to be uh, strong in our faith that if we really say that well uh, we are faithful to God we need to be able to say that yes we are going to endure verse 4 says and there went out another house that was red and power was given to him that sat therein, th thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another 
and there was given unto him a great sword. We, have, we are living in peace nowadays, but there's going to be a time that there will no longer be peace. We are all living in peace and all, but things will be uncomfortable. That's basically what he's saying, that there will not be people, who will, nobody will tolerate another anymore. They will say, oh, well, you know, if this person is saying this, kill him, get him out of the uh, way. So God is giving us the opportunity to, um, to strengthen our faith in him, to have confidence in him, because when these things begin to happen, uh, it is going to be really something that if we don't have that endurance, food, famine, all these things will be happening that you can't go anywhere, you can't have anything, you can't do things, you are going to be restricted. So God is reminding us that we have to be prepared. Verse uh, 8 says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him, followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Look at what is going to be happening. There will be destruction left and right everywhere. So uh, what we are just, we don't want to be, you know, delving deep into this, thing, but the whole idea is that when tribulation begins, can Christians endure? Will they remain faithful? Or will they run away from it and say, oh no, I'm no longer a Christian? Right now, you know, some uh, countries are actually uh, arresting people, arresting Christians and hindering them, not allowing them. Here, we're able to still go around. We're able, able to do things. We're able to uh, maybe uh, go out, go to the grocery, go uh, to work, depending on what we do. But there will be a time. What is happening nowadays may really be the beginning of the end, as we've read in Matthew 24, which is also in Luke 21, and uh, it's uh, in uh, Mark 13, which we read last uh, time. But the whole idea is that can Christians endure the tribulation? Because it is not going to be easy. Verse uh, 12 says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun and the sun became black and sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And what has happened? Verse 13 says, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Can Christians endure the tribulation? What are we hearing in verse uh, 12? Earthquake. We've seen earthquake. We've all heard of earthquake here and there and all that. But this earthquake is what will happen around the world. It is not an ordinary earthquake. It says, hmm, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Right now, the earth, we can, around the world, and we can still see the sun. We can still see, you know, in the moon, in the, in the evening, uh, at night. But God is saying that what will happen during the tribulation will cause 
the sun to become black. If the sun is black, it means that whether you have electricity at home or you have all these things, those things will not work anymore. And this is something that Christians must uh, examine. He says the moon will become red. The moon that we see at night and we all fancy and we all uh, praise God for, we thank God for, it's going to change. And then the stars, verse 13. The stars of heaven will fall because things are happening. Things will be generating that and nobody will be able to, you are going to have so many things to say, oh, what, what, where, where can I run to? There will, not be any, there will not be any place. And then we are being told also, verse 14, and the heavens will be removed. It will be, it will be rolled off. Because as the Lord has already told us, this world is going to be destroyed. Not by the people of the world, not by this sin. It is out of sin, out of God's judgment. He is going to destroy the whole earth. And, but before he destroys the whole world, uh, you know, there, we will not be, you know, nobody will be here because uh, everywhere will be destroyed. God will make a new heaven and a new earth. So while there is all this destruction, there is all these mountains, and every mountain and the island were moved out of their places. Why? Because God is going to begin the final things. 15 says, And the earth, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and and the mighty men, and every bondman, every slave, and every free man shall, what shall they do? They will hide themselves. They will try to say, oh, I need to go underground. People who say they have bunkers. People who have built all these things, and, and some will go into the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains. And what else would they say? Oh, verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. In this case, this verse that about these people who are going to be asking the rocks to, uh, to cover them to, so that they, uh, God will not see them. This is the time of the judgment against those who are sinners. But those who really remember uh, when what we read in uh, Matthew, where uh, Christ is going to call, send his angels for to, to bring out those who have already uh, been doing his will, who have been remaining faithful to him. He will send forth his angels. That is what he will uh, do. But the sinners who are going to be left, you know, those are the people who are going to be saying, Lord, uh, or, I am uh, sorry and all of that, but they are going to try to hide. But there will, no be, there will not be any place to hide. 